Everyone stops to go in, however. What's the general surroundings? What's the use of going into all that right now? It'll be far mean, it's our mean it, ain't And I want to know what I'm in. Why don't you tell him, Jimmy? If anything should happen, how do I let the office know who to look out for? <coughs> you know we've been working the continent. Pleasure places and all that? So I've heard. He's over there. Bad Homburg in Bohemia. We ran across a young girl who'd been having some sort of trouble. A sister just died. No parents. A match to cold her back. Found out that the sister of hers had been having some sort of a love affair with a... Well... <laughs> with a foreign gentleman of exceedingly high rank. A foreign gentleman? That's what I said. How much was that to? Promise of marriage. Broke it, of course. And her heart with it. I don't know what more she expected, but anyhow, she did expect more. She and her child died together. Oh. Dead? Yes, but the case isn't. There's evidence. Photographs, letters, jewellery with inscriptions that he gave her. The sister's been keeping them. We've been keeping the sister, you see? And what's a little game? To get even. And what's your little game? Whatever there is in it. All these papers and such ought to be worth a little something. That's just it. He knows he can't get married with them in the way. He knows it very well. But what's more, the family knows it. Oh, family. Rich, I take it. Rich isn't quite the word. There's something else. My God! Royalty and silver! <laughs> Which one of them? Well, I can't tell you that. Well, now we are a moving among the swells, ain't we? Where is he? Be careful, Jimmy. Oh. Is this any time to be careful? Will you tell? Oh. Will you? Look out! Oh. Who is it? Tall, slim man, long coat, soft hat, smooth face, carries an ebony cane. Sherlock Holmes, he's here. We won't answer the bell. No, no, you don't understand. That man, he's got hypernatural powers. He knows what the rats are thinking in the cellars. Nonsense. No, Mr. Holmes. You interest me very much. Ah. Upon my word, yes. <laughs> We've all heard of your wonderful insights, your marvelous ingenuity, picking up and following clues, and the remarkable way in which you find uh, information from the most trifling details. <laughs> I, I dare say in this brief moment or two, you discovered any number of things about me. Nothing of any consequence, Mr. Chetwood. I had scarcely more than wondered why you rushed off and sent that telegram in such a frightened hurry. What possible excuse you could have had for downing that tumbler of raw brandy at the lion's head on the way back? Why your friend left so suddenly by the terrace window, and what there could possibly be about that safe in the lower part of that desk to cause you such painful anxiety? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very good indeed. There would be no trouble for me at all to throw you out to the street. Quite possibly not. But trouble would swiftly follow such an experiment on your part. It's a cursed lucky thing for you I'm not armed. Yes, well, when Miss Faulkner comes down, you can go and arm yourself. Oh, so well. This is Mr. Holmes. Yes. Do you wish to see me? Very much indeed, Miss Faulkner. But I regret to see that you are far from well. Oh, no. No? I beg your pardon, but what does this mean? Nothing. Nothing? And these marks on your neck clearly showing the clutch of a man's fingers. Does that mean nothing also? No. It occurs to me that I would like to have an explanation of this. A detective? Quite so. And my business is this. I have been consulted as to the possibility of obtaining from you certain letters and other things which are supposed to be in your possession and which I need not tell you are the source of the greatest anxiety. It is quite true that I have such letters, Mr. Holmes, but it will be impossible to get them from me. Others have tried and failed. There's nothing more to say. Good night, Mr. Holmes. My dear Miss Faulkner, I beg you to... Mr. Chatwood! Mr. Chatwood, what is it? the lamp in the kitchen, sir, it fell off the table and everything down there is blazing, sir. Why, oh, she is a Don't be alarmed, Miss Faulkner, there is no fire. No fire? The smoke was all arranged for by me. Arranged for? What does this mean, Mr. Holmes? That I wanted this package, Miss Faulkner. As you very likely conjecture, the alarm of fire was merely meant for you to betray your hiding place, which you did. And I availed myself of that betrayal, as you see. But now that I witness your great distress, I find that I cannot take them. 
Unless you can possibly change your mind and give them to me of your own free will. What? So you've got them, have you? Now I suppose we're going to see you walk out of the house. It is a matter of constant regret to me, Miss Faulkner, that my chosen profession involves me with the underworld, most of whose members are not gentlemen. <laughs> Good night, Miss Faulkner. As for you, sir, and you, madam, I beg you to understand that you continue your persecution of that young lady at your peril. Good night. <laughs> Got us watched. What we want to do now is leave it alone and let the Emperor have any. You mean Professor Moriarty? That's who I mean. Holmes! Holmes! Holmes is gradually completing chains of evidence, which if we allow him to continue, will reach to me as surely as the sun will rise. Reach to me! However, there is something that we do want. Have you seen these letters, these photographs, and whatever else there may be? Have you seen them? Do you know what they're like? I have. I've looked them through carefully several times. Good. Then you could make a counterfeit set of these and tie them up to look exactly like the package that Sherlock Holmes held in his hand last night. I could manage the letters. Good, if you can manage the letters. We'll send someone round who can manage the rest from your description. I shall need that package by 11 o'clock tonight. 12 hours to make. It will be ready, sir. Good. Oh, and Basic, inform the last car that we may be needing uh, the gas chamber at Stepney tonight. The gas chamber? Yes, the one that backs out on the river. <coughs> Have Cragen there a quarter before the hour, along with two others. You see, I should obtain the original documents from Miss Faulkner and negotiate them for my, far more than you would have ever obtained. In addition, you shall have the opportunity to sell the counterfeit package to Mr. Sherlock Holmes for a good round sum. Basic, place your men at nine tonight for Sherlock Holmes in Baker Street. You go there yourself, sir? Yes, I shall go there myself. <laughs> myself. I shall offer him peace or death. Either way, I have him. I have him. Yes, but how the deuce did you know that my wife was away? Where the deuce is your second waistcoat button and what the deuce is yesterday's carnation doing in today's lapel? Why, this is elementary, my dear Watson. A child's play of deduction. Well, which is it today? Cocaine or morphine or what? Cocaine, my dear fellow. A 7% solution. And back to my old love. Would you care to try some? Certainly not. That is his food. These uh, drugs are poison, slow but certain. They involve tissue changes of a most serious nature. Just what I want. I'm bored to death with my old tissues. I want to get a whole new lot. Really, Holmes? I'm trying to save you. You can't do it, old fellow, so don't waste your time. The most important and far-reaching case of my career, one upon which I've been laboring for the last 14 months, and which is now rapidly approaching a singularly diverting climax. I allude to the case of Professor James Moriarty. Moriarty? I don't remember having heard of the fellow. The Napoleon of crime. The Napoleon. He sits motionless like an ugly, venomous spider in the center of his web. But that web has 10,000 radiations, and that spider 
knows every quiver of every one of them. Oh, really? This is very interesting. But what would he do when he sees that you have him? Do? Why, he will do me the honor, my dear doctor, of bending every resource of this wonderful organization of criminals to the one purpose of my destruction. Why, Holmes, this is a dangerous thing. On the contrary, it's perfectly delightful. Saves me any number of doses of those deadly drugs upon which you favor me with your medical views. Watson, my whole life is spent in a series of frantic endeavors to escape the dreary commonplace of existence. For a brief period, I escaped. You should congratulate me. You were going to try the experiment of making her betray their hiding place by uh, an alarm of fire in her own home, and after that... Precisely, after that. Oh, did the plan succeed? Of course, as far as I've gone. And you got Foreman into the house as butler? Foreman was in his butler. And upon your signal, he uh, overturned a lamp in the kitchen and scattered the smoke balls and gave the alarm. And the young lady, did she? Yes, she did, Watson, she did. It all transpired precisely as I planned. I took the package of papers from its hiding place, and as, as I told you I would, I handed it back to Miss Faulkner. Yes, but you never told me why you proposed to give it back. For a very simple reason, my dear doctor, because to take it would have been theft. The contents of that package were the absolute property of the young lady. To induce her to give it to me of her own free will. Its return to her, after I had taken it, was the first step in that direction. The second depends entirely upon what happens this evening. I expect Foreman to report in half an hour. I, I beg you to pardon me, sir. The body told me to come over here as soon as I got here. Quite right, quite right. Oh, I'm afraid there's trouble, sir. The butler, your assistant, the Foreman. One. Yes, Foreman. Something done to him, sir. Oh, sir, the noise. What noise? Oh, Try to be calm and answer me. What noise? It's a dreadful cry of a man who's been struck down by something deadly. Coat, boot, and order a cab, quick. Yes, sir. Did anyone follow him down? I didn't see, sir. Don't wait, order the cab now. The game's a foot, Watson. Take this and follow me. Oh, I think I hear Foreman now. <sighs> Nothing more last night, sir. I got a look at them from the outside. They were working on a counterfeit of the package that we are working for. You'll have to watch for some sharp trick, sir. No, they'll have to watch for a sharp trick, Foreman. They've taken in a partner, a dangerous one at that. He not only directed this conspiracy against you, but he also advised in the making of the counterfeit package. In a very short time, I shall receive an offer from Mr. Larrabee to sell me that package. He will indicate that Miss Faulkner has changed her mind and has desired to get what she can from them. Letters, sir. Most important letters, Unless sir. Unless I am greatly mistaken, the said communication is at hand. Would you read it for me, Watson? There's a good fellow. My eyes, you know, <laughs> cocaine and all those things you like so much. <laughs> I have the honor of informing you that Miss Faulkner has changed her mind regarding the letters, etc., which you wish to obtain, and has decided to dispose of them for a monetary consideration. If you have the cab followed or try any other underhand trick, you won't get what you want. Let me know your decision. Yours truly, James Ladder. Now let me see if I have the points. <coughs> 11 o'clock, Guards Monument, Waterloo Place, cab with wooden shutters. No one to accompany me, no one to follow me, or I don't get what I want. Quite right. Ah, but this... Very well. Give this to the old lady, apologize for the delay, and take a good look at that driver again. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. My dear Holmes, did not say you would go. Surely I did. But it is the counterfeit package. The counterfeit is precisely what I want. Oh, why so? Because with it, I shall obtain the original. See what he does, Billy. Yes, sir. Now, you've given me some idea of this case. Don't you think it would be only fair to let me have the rest? Uh, what do you want to know? Well, you could tell me what you propose to do with this counterfeit package, which you are willing to sacrifice your life to obtain. Oh, my life is worth nothing when it defends so heroic a purpose. I shall assist a man who has robbed a young lady of her life and honor to rob her sister of her property. I intend, with the aid of the counterfeit, to make her willingly hand me the genuine. I shall accomplish this with a piece of trickery and deceit of which I am heartily ashamed, which I never would have undertaken had I known her as I do now. It's a shame, Watson. She's, she's rather a nice girl. 
Nice girl, is she? Then you think possibly... I beg your pardon, sir. Singular. I didn't think it was anything that serious. I'll go at once. Ah, I'll let the minute homes. Billy, get down there quickly and look after Dr. Watson. Yes, sir. If the boy's gone and there's a man with him, it means mischief. Yes, sir. Let me know quick. Don't stop to come up. Ring the bell. I'll hear it. Ring it loud. Quick now. Sir, sir! Dangerous habit to finger a loaded revolver in the pocket of one's dressing gown. You will go straight from here to the hospital if you keep your hand in your pocket. Oh, evidently you do not know me. On the contrary, I think it's fairly evident that I do. <laughs> I can spare you five minutes if you have anything to say. What were you about to do? Look at my watch. I'll let you know when the five minutes are up. Pray, have a seat. Everything that I have to say has already crossed your mind. Then my answer has already crossed yours. You stand fast then. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm sure that a man of your intelligence must realize that there can be only one outcome to this affair. It is necessary for you to withdraw. You have managed things in such a way that I have only one alternative left. It has been an intellectual treat for me to see the way you have grappled with this affair and let me say unaffectedly that it would be a grief for me to take any extreme measure. Oh, you smile, sir, but rest assured I really would. Danger is part of my trade. This is not danger, Mr. Holmes. This is inevitable destruction. You stand in the way not merely of an individual, but of a mighty organization, the full extent of which you, with all of your cleverness, have been unable to realize. Get your hands down. I was merely... Well, merely don't do it. Well, uh, this, sir, is... Oh, 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 right, sir, put it on. Shall I see if he's got another one, sir? Why, Billy, you do disappoint me. The gentleman has just gone to the trouble to inform you that he hasn't. When, sir? when he made a snatch for this one. Rather a rash project of yours, Moriarty. Even though you made the street secure in every respect, to think of using that thing here in this part of town and so early in the evening. But I am afraid that in the pleasure of this conversation, I am neglecting business elsewhere. Ah, oh, well, well. It seems a pity that I have done all that I could. I know every step of your game, Mr. Holmes. You hope to put me in the dock, but I tell you that I will never stand in the dock. You hope to beat me, but I tell you you will never beat me. And if you are clever enough to bring destruction down upon me, rest assured that I will do as much for you. You have paid me several compliments, Moriarty. Let me pay you one in return when I say that were I assured of your destruction, I would, in the interest of the public, Cheerfully, except my own. I came here tonight to see if peace could not be arranged between us. Ah, oh, yes, I saw that. That's rather good. But you have seen fit not only to reject my proposals, but to make insulting references coupled with threats of arrest. Quite so. Quite so. Well, Mr. Holmes, if you do not heed my warning, perhaps you will heed this. Yes, sir. 
Show this gentleman nicely to the door. Yes, sir. This way, sir. Touché, Mr. Holmes. Auf Wiedersehen. You are a good boy, Billy. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Now go get me a cab to go to Waterloo Place. Yes, sir. Such man. He might be here, and he may not. <coughs> Don't like that. It ain't safe. Well, if anything has get too much, what's the matter with the place? It looks all right to me. Well, I'm going to let no matches and I'll stay looking inside. Oh, there you are, Prince. Is that you, Leary? Yes, sir. And McTeague. Yes, sir. You want to be careful with it tonight. You've got a tough one. Sherlock Holmes. He gets away. Well, I'm sorry for you, that's all. Oh, sure. Professor Moriarty's coming. The governor? Yes. He wanted to see this. Where's Craig? Back here, sir. Ah, Craig, have you got your men? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, no mistakes tonight, Craig. That's right, sir. Basic that door. A small curse. <coughs> No outlet? None whatever, sir. With that window? Nailed down shut, sir. A man could break the glass. If he did, he'd come against heavy iron bars on the outside, sir. We'll have more tied up before we could break any glass, sir. Of course, you've done this before. You're sure of it's airtight. Every crevice is caught, sir. And the men? When the men turn on the gas, they will leave by that door. Yes, sir. Is it absolutely secure? Heavy bolts on the outside, iron bars on the walls. Good. Show me how quickly you can operate. Oh, they tie the man down, so there's no need to hurry. Show me how quickly you can operate. Leary. Yes, sir. Craigan. Yes, sir. You will keep your men outside until Mr. Larrabee has had a chance to have a bit of an interview with the gentleman. Take your men up that stairwell over there and keep them out of sight so that he doesn't see them when he comes in. We must have a lamp here. Better not, sir. There might be some traces of gas left over. But there's a lamp there. That's a safety lamp, sir. Oh! Oh, that is a safety lamp, sir! Well, the moment he sees that, he's going to know exactly what we're up to and we're finished. Now, there's no gas here now. So go and tell the last car to bring us a good lamp. The most important thing tonight to remember is no shooting. Not a single shot can be heard in the alley below. No, what you must do is get his revolver away from him. Two of you will take his attention up front, while a third comes up from behind and snatches it out of his pocket. Then you have him. Is that clear? I'll attend to it, sir. Mm. Put up the lamp. No, wait. You'll need that when the other one's taken away. Right. You mustn't see it, understand. Uh, don't put it out. Just cover it with something. Sir, so, okay, it might be a little early. That will do. Ah, Mr. Lillby. Welcome. You realize, of course, that these gentlemen are waiting for you. I understand, sir. Mm -hmm. Now, I give you 
you this opportunity to get what you can for your troubles. However, you realize that anything that is found on him after you finished is subject to the usual division. Yeah. That's all I want. Suppose after you've quite finished with him, you blow that little whistle that I observe hanging from your watch chain. Then these gentlemen will take their turn. <laughs> oh, in Craigum? Yes, sir. At the proper moment, I want you to extend my compliments to the gentleman and tell him that I wish him a pleasant journey to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Jim. This sort of thing ain't so much of my line. I suppose not. When it comes to drilling a safe or a long into bank vault, I feel perfectly at home, but I don't care so much to see a man. Well, it ain't my line. It, all I want you to do is go out to the corner of the street and let me know when he comes. And how will I let you know? Well, have you got a cab whistle? Certainly. Well, when you see O'Higgins driving with him, run down the alley there and blow it twice. Oh. Then you won't be needing me here again. No. All right, then. I'll tear myself away. <laughs> How did you get here? I followed you in a cab. And what have you been doing all this time? Informing the police, perhaps? I waited. I was afraid he'd come. Uh, to warn him very likely. Yes, to warn him. Then it's just as well you came up. I came to make sure. Of what? You're going to swindle a man and deceive him, I know that. But is there anything more? What could you do if there was? Now you are. Such men as you are always open to sale. How much would you give? The genuine package. The real ones. All the proofs, everything. Have you got them with you? No, but I can get them. <laughs> so you'd do all this for that man, would you? <laughs> I suppose you think he's your friend. I thought of it. Well, look what he's doing now. Coming here to buy those things off me. They're false. They're houses. Well, he thinks they're genuine, doesn't he? And he wouldn't come here to buy them if he didn't. He may ask my permission still. <laughs> he won't get a chance. If he the chance, then there is something else. Something else? Well, you see me here by myself, don't you? Where are those men? What men? Three villainous looking men. I saw them come in the street door. Oh, those men. They went up that stairway there. You can see them in the next building if you look through that window. In the passageway, if you please. Oh, no, no, don't please. You would dare to keep me here. I might dare, but I won't. You'd be in the way. Where are those men? Oh, you'll see them very shortly. I knew it. <laughs> you are going to harm him. Oh, no, it's just a little joke at his expense. <coughs> you wanted the letters, the package I kept in the safe. I'll get it for you. Let me go. And I'll bring it to you here. I won't say anything to anyone, not to him, not to the police, not to anyone. You needn't get it. But you can tell me where it is. You're very yes. quick about it, too. Yes, if you promise, you won't go on with this. Oh, of course. That's understood. I promise. Certainly. I promise. Now, where is it? It's just outside my bedroom window, just outside on the left, fastened between the shutter and the wall. You can easily find it. Yes, I can easily find it. Tell them, tell them to go. Yeah, let me get back to the house. At least not till I've been there. Shut up. Keep her outside. Right, get a hold of her. You said if I told you. Well, we haven't done anything to harm him yet, have we? Well, then send them away. Certainly. Go away now, boys. There's no more work for you tonight. <laughs> they don't listen. They don't obey you. Oh. My God, he's here. Then sit, Prince. I put him on the watch. Look, shut her up in the cupboard. That'll do. There's no lock on this door. No lock. No. Drive something in. Here, this time. A knife won't hold it. Yes, it will. Drive it in strong. You'll have to find us here. Yes, and he won't either. We'll go and do him up. No, you <laughs> won't. I'll see him first, if you please. That was orders, Kraken. That's right, Kraken.
How the devil is it you crooks always manage to hit on the same places for your scoundrelly business? I should have thought after all this driving around in a closed cab, you'd show me something new. Seen it before, have you? But I should think so. I nabbed a friend of yours as he was trying to drop himself out of that window. Ned Colvin, the cracksman. Colvin? <laughs> never heard of him before. Hmm. Well, you never heard of him after. Brace of counterfeiters use these regal chambers in the summer of 90. One of them hid in that cupboard. Times have changed since then. So they have, Mr. Larrabee. So they have. Then it was only cracksmen, counterfeiters, and petty swindlers of various kinds. Now... Well, what now? Well, between you and me, Mr. Larrabee, I've heard some altogether agreeable rumors concerning this place. Rumors of some pretty shady business not too far from here. And if my suspicion is correct, it is. It is what? Cocked. Well, what does that signify to us? Nothing to us, Mr. Larry. Nothing to us. But it may signify a great deal to the poor devil who's been caught in this trap. If it means nothing to us, let's leave it alone and get down to business. My time is limited. Quite right. Quite right. I should have realized that my little reflections would have no interest to you. <coughs> but you see, I take a great interest in what are known as the criminal classes. And that same interest makes me wonder why you managed to choose such a gruesome place for an ordinary business transaction. I selected this place, Mr. Holmes, because I thought you might not feel quite so much at home as you did in my own house last night. <laughs> there you have me, Mr. Larrabee. You make a singular miscalculation. I feel perfectly at home. Perfectly. Here is the package which is the object of this meeting, Mr. Holmes. I haven't opened it myself, but Miss Faulkner assures me everything is there. And there is no need in opening in it. Oh, well, I want to see you satisfied. But that is precisely the condition in which you now behold me. Miss Faulkner is a truthful young lady. Her word is sufficient. Very well. And what shall we say? Well, of course, we want a pretty large price for it. Miss Faulkner is giving up everything. She would not be satisfied unless the result justified. Suppose that as Miss Faulkner knows nothing whatsoever about this affair, we omit her name from this conversation. Who told you she knows nothing? <coughs> you did. Every look, tone, gesture, everything you have said and done since I have entered this room has informed me that she has never consented to this, to this transaction. It is a little speculation of your own. I suppose you think you can read me like a book. No, like a primer. <laughs> we'll let that pass. How much will you give? A thousand pounds. I couldn't take it. How much do you ask? Five thousand. I couldn't give it. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Holmes. I'm afraid we've had all this trouble for nothing. <coughs> no, I wouldn't say that, Mr. Larrabee. To me, the occasion has been doubly interesting. <coughs> Not only have I had the honor of meeting you again, but I've also had the opportunity to make some observations regarding this place which may not come amiss. Why, well, I've been offered 4,000 pounds for this little piece of treasure. Why didn't you take it? Because I intend to get more. That is too bad. If they gave me four, if they offered 4,000, they'll give me five. On the contrary, they won't give you anything. Why not? Because they've turned the case over to me. Will you give me 3,000? <laughs> Strange as it may seem, Mr. Larrabee, my time is every bit as limited as yours. I have brought with me the sum of one thousand pounds. If it is your desire to sell at this figure, kindly apprise me of that fact at once. If not, allow me to wish you a very good evening. Go on, you can have it. It's too small a matter to haggle over. I 
thought you said you were just a thousand pounds. I did. There it is. Yeah, you brought a try for more, I see. I did not say that I had not brought any more. You can't do your little tricks when it comes down to it, can't you? It all depends on who I'm dealing with. <laughs> Now I have you, Mr. Larrabee. Up to now, you've been very cunning, very cautious, very wise. We have nothing to hold you on. But this little slip will get you ten years for robbery. Oh, you can have me in, are you? And what are your views about being able to get out of here yourself, Mr. Holmes? I do not anticipate any particular difficulty. <laughs> Perhaps you'll change your mind about that. Whether I change my mind or not, I shall certainly leave this place, and your arrest will swiftly follow. My arrest, huh? For robbery, eh? Even if you get out of this place, you haven't got a witness. Not a witness to your name. I'm not so sure of that, Mr. Larrabee. Do you always fasten this door with a knife? Keep away from that door. Stand back. Contemptible scoundrel. What does it mean? It means curse it quick. Afraid <laughs> you're badly hurt, Miss Faulkner. Oh, Mr. Holmes. Ah, Cregan. Delighted to see you. And you too, McTague. I infer from your presence here at this particular juncture that I am not dealing with Mr. Larrabee alone. Your inference is quite correct, Mr. Holmes. It's not difficult to imagine who's at the bottom of a conspiracy such as this. <coughs> You're beginning to feel a little more yourself, Miss Faulkner, because we will have to leave here. Oh, yes, do let us go, Mr. Holmes. Now you'll have to wait a bit, Mr. Holmes. It's a small matter of business we would like to talk over. Very well, Cregan. I'll see you tomorrow morning in your cell at Bow Street. Very sorry, sir. But I can't wait till morning. It's time to be settled tonight. Very well. We'll settle it tonight. It's so very important, Mr. Holmes. Indeed, so very important that you can't attend to it now. <gasps> Get it gone. <laughs> Got it. <coughs> ah, Leary. It needed only your blithe personality to make the party complete. There is only one other I could wish to welcome here, and that is the talented author of this midnight carnival. We shall have him, however, by tomorrow night. Though we aren't here, Mr. Holmes, he gave me a message for you. He presented his kindest compliments and wished you a pleasant journey to the other side. <laughs> That's very kind of him, I'm sure. Uh, writing your will, are you? <laughs> no. Just a brief description of one or two of you for the police. They know the rest. Oh, and when will you give it to him, Mr. In nine or nine and a half minutes, Mr. Leary. Oh, leaving here in nine minutes, are you? No. In one. It will take me eight minutes to find a policeman. <laughs> this is a very dangerous neighborhood. <laughs> Do let us know when you're ready to start. I'm ready now. I have a mind you won't be gone anywhere, Mr. Holmes. We're going to chain you up nice and tight. Well, by Jove, I don't think you will. That's my idea, you know. And you can save yourself a great deal of trouble if you submit nice and quiet-like. Because if you don't, you might get knocked around a bit. Oh, Mr. Holmes! Stay away from him. Come over here if you don't want to get hurt. My child, if you don't want to get hurt, stay close to me. Aren't you coming? No. You better look out, miss. I get killed. And you can kill me too. I'm afraid you don't mean that, Miss Faulkner. Yes, I do. No, you would not say it at another time or place. I would say it anywhere. Small ways. You'll have it out with us, eh? Did you think for one moment that I wouldn't have it out with you, Craig? Now then, if that's the case, I'll have to do you one, the same as I did your right hand man this afternoon. You heard him say that, didn't you? Same as he did my right hand man this afternoon. Yeah. Yes. However unpleasant the experience, I ask you to remember that face. In three days' time, I shall ask you to identify it in the prisoner's dock. Yes, and the rest of you with him. You surprise me, gentlemen, thinking that you are safe with anyone in this room and never once taking the time to look at that window. If you wanted to be perfectly safe, you would have had the bars put back. Bars or no bars? You're not going to get out of here as easy as you expect. There are so many ways, Mr. Larrabee, I hardly know which one to choose. Well, you better choose quick, I'll tell you that. Very well. I'll choose now. And my choice falls on this. I don't get it. I don't get it. I Good night, Mr. 
evening. Oh, good night, Doctor. Thank you very much. Uh, good night, Doctor. This way, dear. <laughs> Mrs. Parsons, that woman who just left, you know her? I can't say I've ever liked having seen her before. Is there anyone else waiting? Yes, sir. There's one gentleman, sir, in the waiting room. Show him in. Uh, that's uh, hard. I don't find anything wrong. Uh, well, you might not find anything wrong, sir, but I feel it wrong. If you could only give me a little something to take away this awful agony. Oh, pain, pain! Oh, that curious it should affect your voice that way. Well, I could give you a gargle. It might help a little. Oh, yes, if only you would, Doctor. I just thought I'd fall fine where I came. Mrs. Parsons, show this man the uh, shortest way to the street. Oh, but close the door I understand. <coughs> I understand quite enough. Good night. Uh, what? You know, the draft plays hell with me through, don't you know, sir? What? You know, I get this terrible shooting experience. This way, sir, you know, please. You know, I consider you treating me damned outrageous, I do. And why well, you haven't had the last for this day? Doctor, it's awfully good of you to see me. I knew what a busy man you must be. But I'm in such trouble. Oh, it's really too dreadful. I'm Mrs. M. Dewitt Seaton. Dear me, I didn't bring my card case. Or if I did, I've lost it. Well, don't trouble about the card, Mrs. Seaton. Thank you. It has just simply happened. Oh, I know that it wasn't his fault. I know it. Uh, whose fault? My brother's. My poor, dear, youngest brother. He couldn't possibly have done such a thing. Oh, Doctor, it's really too dreadful. I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. C. <laughs> Thank you. They told me you were Mr. Holmes's friend. Several people told me that. Several. They advised me to ask you where I might find him. And everything depends on it, Doctor. Everything. Holmes, of course. He's just the one you want. That's it. He's just the one. And there's hardly any time left. Thank you, Doctor. You don't know how you've encouraged me. Well, good night. <laughs> what is that, Mrs. Parsons? I can't tell, but it sounded to me like an accident. Oh, sir. Dear, I do hope it isn't anything serious. Well, I'm sure it's nothing more serious than a broken down cab. Uh, Mrs. Parsons, do you have to see what it is? Yes, sir. Uh, there's the bell, sir. There's somebody hurt and they're wanting you. Well, let them bring him in here and ask the cab to wait for me. Mrs. C. If you would kindly step this way. I may be of some use, Doctor. None, whatever. Oh, but I must see the poor fellow. I haven't the power to go. I believe you have an ulterior motive in coming here, madam. You will kindly leave at once. Watch your legs, sir. Here we go. Careful. Hey, ma'am, it'll be all right. I'll sit over here. No, 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 sir. Oh, there. You'll see the doctor and it'll be all right. Look, there's a doctor right there. That's not a doctor. It is a doctor. Here, doctor, we have a look at this old gents. Yes. Where's my hat? I want my hat. Where's your hat over there? That's not my hat. Oh, right. It's my hat. Well, I'm on. Daniel, come back here. No, I can't stand around here. Someone will be pinching my cat. There'll be no cat in here. I won't know. This is a conspiracy. I tell you, I don't want to be here. Oh, uh, why am I? If you'll sit quietly for a moment, sir, I'll have a look at you. Yeah, I have. Smelling oh, lady, a friend indeed is a friend indeed. I want the pretty lady, would you? Don't let her near that window. Oh, is that you? Quite so. <laughs> Look out, Holmes. You can get out that way. I don't think so. Ah, glad to see you keep a few prescriptions carefully done up. Good for the nerves. We've got her, sir. Good heavens, it's for me. Has Victor Bradstreet arrived with his maid? Yes, sir. One of them is in the hall holding her. The others are in uh, the kitchen garden. They came over the back wall in Mortimer Street. My dear. One moment, my dear doctor. As you doubtless gather from the little episode that has just taken place, we are making the arrests. The scoundrels are hot on my track. To get me out of the way is the one chance left to them. And I'm taking advantage of their pursuit to draw them here where we can carefully lay our hands on them one by one. We made a pretty good haul already. Four last night in the gas chamber, six this afternoon in various places. But I regret to say that up to this time, the professor himself has yet to rise to the bait. Well, where do you think he is now? 
in the open streets under some clever disguise, waiting for a chance to get at me. And that woman, she was sent in here to a spy. Quite so, a spy. To let them know by some signal. Probably at that window. <laughs> the draperies. To let them know if I was here. And it just occurs to me that it may not be a bad idea to try the professor with that bait. Foreman! Yes, sir. Bring that Larrabee woman back in here. And when I light a fresh cigarette, let go your hold of her, of her carelessly, as if your attention was drawn somewhere else. Pick her up again when I say. Yes, sir. Mrs. Larrabee, lads. Mr. Holmes would like a word with her. Oh, my dear Mrs. Larrabee, I took the liberty of having you brought in here in order that I might convey to you in a few fitting words my sincere sympathy on your rather unpleasant predicament. It's a lie, a lie. There's no predicament. I'm charmed to gather from your rather forcible observation that you do not consider it so. Quite so, too. Our prisons are so well conducted nowadays, quite as comfortable as most of the hotels. <laughs> Quieter, more orderly. How the prisons are conducted is no concern of mine. There is nothing they can hold me for. Nothing. Yes, well, there may be something in that. Yet it just occurs to me that you may wish to be near your poor, unfortunate husband. We hear a great deal about the heroic devotion of wives and all that sort of rubbish. You know, Mrs. Larrabee, when it comes right down to it, You'd have done a great deal better on your own. Many thanks, Walden. You can pick her up again. Do you mind closing the drapes, Watson? I don't want you shot at from the street. It's too late. Too late, eh? The signal is given. You will hear from him soon. Wouldn't surprise me in the least. I expect to hear from him now. Oh, I've got to talk to no, Mr. No. It's all right, Mrs. Parsons. Let him go. They're laying to get you in that cab when you come out. But don't you do it, sir. Don't do it. Get out again quick, Billy. And keep your eyes peeled. Yes, sir. Watson, can you let me have a heavy portmanteau for a few moments? Oh, uh, Mrs. Parsons, would you fetch my Gladstone and bring it in here? I'm afraid it's rather shabby. Mm. Mm. Many thanks, Mrs. Larrabee, but your first signal is all that we require. By it, you informed your friend, the professor, that I was here in the house. Now you wish to signal that there is danger. Well, there is danger, Mrs. Larrabee, but I don't wish him to know it. Take her out again, Foreman, and make her happy and comfortable. Oh, and by the way, you might tell the inspector to wait. We may have another one for him. You never can tell. That's a remarkable woman, and yet her crime is commonplace. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Parsons. Oh, Mrs. Parsons, a few moments ago, you ordered a cab for the doctor, I believe? Yes, sir. It's still waiting? I believe it is, sir. Very good. Would you be so good as to tell the driver, the one you'll find there now, to come in here and get a valise? Make sure that he comes in by himself, and when he does, Tell him that is the one. Yes, sir. But surely he will come in. Surely he will. To get me into that cab is the one chance left to him. <coughs> He'll risk almost anything for that. At times like this, Watson, you should always tell your man never to take the first cab that comes, not yet the second, the third. But, but in this case... In this case, I speak for your future guidance. Right this way, sir. Well, goodbye, old friend. I'll write you from Paris. Be sure to keep me fully informed on the progress of events. Oh, as for these papers here, uh, I'll attend to them when I get back. Uh, oh, my good man, would you help me with these straps here? There's a few things in that valise I wouldn't want to lose. You never can tell. The railways are so unreliable nowadays. Be so good as to ring the bell two or three times in rapid succession, Watson. Got a man out there? Yes, sir. The inspector came himself. Ah, the inspector himself. 
We shall hear graphic a tale in tomorrow's paper of the uh, difficult and dangerous arrest he succeeded in making at Dr. Watson's house in Kensington. <laughs> Take him out, woman, and introduce them. They'll be charmed to meet. Wait, see what he wants. Do you imagine, Sherlock Holmes, that this is the end? I venture to dream that it might be. Are you quite sure that the police will be able to hold me? I am quite sure of nothing. Ah. I've heard that you are planning a little trip. You and your friend here. A trip to the continent. And if I do? I shall meet you there. You will change your course. You will try to elude me. But whatever way you turn, there will be eyes that see and wires that tell. Oh yes, Mr. Holmes. I shall meet you there. And you know it. And if I fall, you will fall with me. Well, I hope we actually couldn't give up our trip. Hmm? Oh, was there ever such a dreary, dismal, unprofitable world? Oh, my dear Holmes, shall be downcast. Your most ruthless adversary is behind bars. For sure, my dear doctor. Then my own little practice will degenerate into an agency for the recovery of lost lead pencils. <laughs> the giving of advice to young ladies from boarding schools. Crime is commonplace. Life is commonplace. No quality save the commonplace had any purpose on this earth. But he'll get out. <laughs> oh, I know, I know, I mustn't indulge my morbid fantasies now. The worst is yet to come. Good heavens, Holmes, we have five minutes to get to Baker Street for your appointment with the Count and Sir Edward to return the uh, package of letters. No, it is all right. They're coming here. Here? That is, if you will be so good as to permit it. Of course, but why not in Baker Street? The police won't allow them through the ropes. Police ropes? Police ropes, crowds, hoes, fire engines. You mean it? Quite so. The villains have burned me out. Oh, good heavens, burned you. That's too bad. What did you lose? Everything. I'm so glad of it. This one thing I shall do here, in the next few minutes, is the end. You mean Miss Faulkner? Watson? There were four to one against me. They said, come here. I said, stay close to me. And she did. She clung to me. I could give her, feel her heart beating against mine. She trusted me. And I was playing a game. It is a dangerous game, but I do play it. It will be the same here tonight. She'll be there, and I'll be here. She'll listen, she'll believe, she'll trust me. And I'll be playing a game. No more. I've had enough. It's my last case. Well, what does it matter anyway? Life is a brief affair at best, a few sunrises and sunsets, a warm breath of a few summers, a cold chill of a few winters, and then, and then, and then. I'm afraid this plan for uh, gaining confidence and regard went a little further than you intended. A trifle? For her or for you? For her and for me. But if you both love each other... Love? Who spoke that word? Love is an emotional thing and is therefore opposed to the true cold reason which I place above all things. I should never marry myself lest I bias my judgment. Women are not to be trusted entirely, not the best of them. I assure you, the most winning woman I ever knew was hanged for poisoning her three children for the insurance money. No, I must cure Miss Faulkner of her regard for me while there's still time. She's coming here. But she wouldn't come alone. No, Mary Kate will be with her. When she comes, can you let her use that room? You can manage that, can't you? Certainly. That may be her now. Uh, 
May I use your dressing room and brush off some of the dust? Uh, by all means. Home. Love. Life. Ah, oh, Watson. Excuse me, sir. A young lady wishes to speak with you. If there's anyone here, she won't come in. Any name? No, she wouldn't say. As you, she said you wouldn't know her. She has her maid with her, sir. But it must be a show her in. Oh, by the way, Parsons, two gentlemen will call. Sir, the Count and Sir Edward. Show them in here and then get uh, Mr. Holmes. You'll find him in my dressing room. Yes, sir. Oh, Mrs. Parsons, if there's anyone else waiting in the lady room, please send them home. And I'll see the young lady now. Yes, sir. Is this Dr. Watson's room? It is. Is... Oh, would you mind telling me if Mr. Holmes, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, is here? He will be before long, Miss... Uh... My name is Faulkner. Oh, Miss Faulkner. He arrived a short time ago and he's gone upstairs for a few moments. Oh. And do you think he'll be coming down soon? Well, the fact is that he is meeting two gentlemen here and I am to call him when they arrive. Do you suppose I could wait without being too much trouble? And see him afterwards. Certainly, my dear. Thank you. And I, I don't want him to know that I came. Well, whatever you wish. There's no need of my telling him. Well, it's very important indeed that you don't, Dr. Watson. I can explain it all afterwards. No explanation is necessary, my dear. Thank you. I suppose there's a waiting room for patients? Yeah. Yes, or you could wait over there in my dispensary. Thank you. I would rather be where it's entirely quiet. <laughs> well, step this way. I believe that two gentlemen have arrived. And when the business between the gentlemen is over, could you please have someone tell me? I'll tell you myself, my dear. Thank you. Sir Edward Leighton and Count von Stolberg. Sir Edward. Count. <laughs> Uh, our appointment with Mr. Holmes has changed to your house, I believe. Quite right, sir. Uh, pray be seated, sir. Mr. Holmes is satisfied with the lunch. He has already arrived, Count. <laughs> 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 oh. He was quite a surprise to receive his uh, message an hour ago changing the place of meeting. We should <clears throat> otherwise have gone to his house in Baker Street. You would have found it in Ashes, sir. Oh. Really? The, the house burnt? Still burning, I presume. Oh, I'm very sorry to hear about this. It, it must be a severe blow to him. Yeah, really, mine's very different. Really? I should hardly have thought. Do oh, I understand you to say, Doctor, that you have sent for Mr. Holmes? Yes, Count. He should be here at any moment. Indeed, I think I hear the sound of his step on the stairs now. Gentlemen, be seated again, I beg. Our business here can be very quickly disposed of. You were notified to come here in order that I might deliver into your hands the package which I was engaged on the behalf of your exalted client to recover. I must say in justice to myself that but for that agreement and the consequent steps which you took on the basis of it, I never would have continued the work. As it was, however, I felt bound to do so and therefore pursued the matter to its finish. I now have the honor to deliver it. Permit me to congratulate you, Mr. Holmes. The opponent, upon the marvelous skill you have displayed and upon the promptness with which you have fulfilled your agreement. Oh, no! 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 Uh, what, uh, what is all this? These letters! Uh, 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 and these other things, uh, where did you get them? I purchased them last night. You purchased them? Quite so. From whom, if I may ask? From whom? From the parties concerned with the consent of Miss Faulkner. You have been deceived. What? This package contains nothing. Not a single letter or paper that we wanted. All clever imitations. These photographs are of another person. You have been duped. In spite of your supposed cleverness, they have tricked you. It's most decidedly duped, Mr. Holmes. Oh, dear Lord, what will the minister say? Well, this is terrible, terrible. It's terrible? Surely you don't mean by that that there may be a possibility that you may not be able to recover them. That is quite true. After your 
positive assurance after the steps that we have taken in this matter by your advice? Surely, sir, you do not mean there is no hope of it. I'm afraid there is none whatsoever, Count. Why, this is scandalous. It is criminal, sir. Have you any idea what this means in terms of our diplomatic relations for Her Majesty's government? You had no right to mislead us in this way, and you shall certainly suffer the consequences for it. I shall see to it that you are brought into a court to answer for it, Mr. Holmes. It shall be such a... There is your... nothing more to say. I am ruined. Ruined. He is not ruined, sir. Gentlemen, you were informed in my letter of this morning that I would produce this package at quarter past nine. It is now fourteen and one half minutes past. <laughs> ah, excellent. Admirable. It is all clear now. Mr. Holmes, <laughs> upon my word. Take this. Never give it up. Do with it only as you wish. What? We are not to have it? You are not to have it. After all this. After all this. But my dear sir. This is outrageous. Your agreement. I break it. Do what you will with me. Arrest, warrant, summons. You'll find me here. Take them away, Watson. Get them out of here. I'm sure, gentlemen, you appreciate the considerable strain under which Mr. Harris has been waiting. No, wait, Dr. Watson. Here is the packet, sir, Edward. No. Yes. I much prefer that he should have it. Ever since you came to me that night and asked me to give it to you, I thought about what you said. You were right. It was revenge. We are greatly indebted to you, Miss Faulkner. To be sure. To be sure. And to you as well, Mr. Holmes, if this was part of the game, it was a most extraordinary method by which you obtained possession of valuable papers. But we won't quarrel with the method so long as it accomplished the desired results. Eh, Count? Certainly not, Sir Edward. <laughs> You have only to notify me of the charge for your service, and you will be sent a check, Mr. Holmes. Uh, to them, I'm the honest wish you good night, Miss Faulkner, uh, Dr. Watson, uh, this way, Count. Has she the same? Now that you think it over, Miss Faulkner, you are no doubt beginning to realize the series of tricks by which I sought to deprive you of your property. I couldn't take it out of, your, out of your house that evening because, of course, it could have been recovered by the law. I therefore resorted to a cruel and cowardly device in order to induce you to relinquish it. But you didn't give it to them. <laughs> no. It was necessary that you should do as you did. What? It was a trick to the very end. And was it a trick last night when they tried to kill you? I went there to purchase the counterfeit package to use as you had seen. And did you know that I would come? No, but, but it fell in with my plans notwithstanding. Now that you see me in my true light, Miss Faulkner, there is nothing more to say but good night and goodbye. Which you ought to be very glad to do. Believe me, I meant you no harm. It was strictly business. For that, you see, I would sacrifice anything. Even my supposed friendship for you was, was a pretense, a sham. I don't believe it. Why not? The way you look, the way you speak, and all sorts of things. You are not the only one who can tell things from small details. Your powers of observation are... <laughs> Somewhat remarkable, Miss Faulkner. <laughs> and your deduction is quite correct. I suppose, indeed, I know, that I love you. I love you, but I also know who you are and what I am. I know that no such man as I, drugged, seared, Poison should ever dream of being part of your sweet life. There is every reason why you should say goodbye and farewell. There is every reason. <laughs>